Welcome everybody. It's lovely to see you all on this super hot <laughs> June. This is like a solstice, solstice practice still. Mm. Yeah. Satcha and Casper and the dogs are away on holiday. So we're holding the, the service tonight. And we have a Dharma glimpse by Kim Allard. When I was young, I asked my dad if prayers work. He replied that they might, but they weren't like a gumball machine where you put something in and get something out. Today, I would reply, maybe. As I turn to Amitabha in meditation, gratitude, and times of difficulty, I find renewed strength from unexpected sources. These small graces happen with a frequency causing me long ago to discarded them as coincidence. I no longer make specific requests, but simply ask for guidance, strength, patience or help for someone in need. The creativity and wisdom of the reply never fails to astound me. Then I have to resist the temptation to tell everyone what happened. I've come to realize these replies are private and unique for each of us. Amitabha's response will resonate within the one who asks, and when shared, can be misunderstood. Dad, today is the fourth anniversary since you passed. My prayer for you is an acknowledgement that we didn't do the dad and daughter thing very well. Our time together was complicated and difficult but I will always be grateful to you for leaving me with coping skills I value because I now know my prayers bear fruit. I send you my love and gratitude for what you could give me and I focus less on what you could not. May you forever be in love, light and peace. Namor Amidabhi. So we'll now go into a period of meditation. You may take a moment to just settle in a bit more fully, settling yourself on the floor in this space. And you may choose to have a gentle focus on the breath throughout the meditation or to silently repeat the word Amitabha or to simply rest and allow your experience to come to you as it is.
We're going to move into a period of chanting now. And there are lots of different ways to think about this, but one way of thinking about it is that this is another way of connecting to the ultimate, to the infinite, of calling out to the, to the Buddha and using sound and mantra and vibration to do that. Om Amitabha Om 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 
We are now going to recite the refuges and precepts, which are ways of living that are conducive to wellness, to peace, and also things which can guide us. Okay. For refuge, I go to the Buddha. For refuge, I go to the Buddha. The one who is awake and full of love. The one who is awake and full of love. Nama Buddha. Nama Buddha. For refuge I go to the Dharma. For refuge I go to the Dharma. All that guides us to wisdom and compassion. All that guides us to wisdom and compassion. Namo Dharma. Namo Dharma. For refuge, I go to the Sangha. For refuge, I go to the Sangha. All those who live in the Buddha's light. All those who live in the Buddha's light. Namo Sangha. Namo Sangha. With faith in the three jewels. With faith in the three jewels. I pray that I may not take life. I pray that I may not take life. With faith in the three jewels. I pray that I may not steal. I pray that I may not steal. With faith in the three jewels. With faith in the three jewels. I pray that I may not fall into sexual misconduct. I pray that I may not fall into sexual misconduct. With faith in the three jewels. With faith in the three jewels. I pray that I may not fall into wrong speech. I pray that I may not fall into wrong speech. With faith in the three jewels. With faith in the three jewels. I pray that I may avoid intoxication. I pray that I may avoid intoxication. 
No blame. No blame. Be kind. Be kind. Love everything. Love everything. Innumerable our sentient beings, we vow to save them all. Inexhaustible our deluded passions, we vow to transform them all. Immeasurable are the Dharma teachings, we vow to master them all. Infinite is the Buddha's way. We vow to fulfill it completely. <coughs> So quite a long time ago, probably about, I don't know, 11 years ago or so, I was told a story about when one of the Buddha's disciples um, came to him and they said, so, you know, Buddha, what, what should I do? Is it, you know, should I go and support the sick or... Should I go and do some cleaning? Should I go and chop some wood? Or should I go and support my the fellow disciples over there with this, you know, with what they're working on? And, um, you know, should I do this or should I do that? And the Buddha just saying, just kept saying, do what it is time for. Do what it is time for. And the disciple was like, well, yeah, but, you know, that doesn't really help me. I mean, you know, what, what should I do? Is it what's the best thing for me to put, be putting my energy into right now? And the Buddha just kept saying, do what it is time for. And so I guess why might the disciple have been asking that? I guess maybe they wanted a bit of clarity. Maybe they could see all these really valuable, important things that needed to be done and they just couldn't really work out which one to go to first. Maybe they were after a bit of recognition for having thought and recognized all the things that needed doing. Maybe they wanted some direction, more direction that, than they had received. I don't know, but I've always found this teaching of doing what it is time for really, really helpful. But sometimes it's not actually that easy to discern what it is time for. Like sometimes I'm there and I'm thinking, well, I really need to do a bit of weeding, but I've got these emails to sort out and I should have done that marketing that I haven't done. And, and oh, I was, I was going to contact my friend, but really, you know, something else needs doing as well. And it, sometimes it's hard for me to discern what it is time for. And, you know, I can make that a bit easier by looking at what is top priority, what needs to be done by the end of the day and by the end of the week and that kind of thing. And Sometimes, actually, what really helps me to work out what it is time for is actually to just completely stop doing anything and to completely drop the intention to do something and to just wait and actually see where the energy lies. And then I can generally tell what this is time for, but we don't always have the possibility to do what it is time for either like sometimes we're struck by creative inspiration and we want to go and write that poem or bake that bread or you know 
do some art or whatever. Sometimes we're struck by this inspiration and actually, you know, we have to leave for work in 20 minutes. And often by the time we get back from work, that inspiration has disappeared or it strikes just when we need to go to bed, <laughs> you know? Um, and sometimes where the energy lies can't be top priority because other people come first sometimes. So sometimes it's not always possible for me and you know for other people to do what it is time for. And yet on those opportunities that I have to do that when I like properly stop and I actually realize genuinely where the energy lies and what it is time for and engage with that, then just things flow in a way that they don't when I'm running by priority or by, by schedule. <coughs> and I look at my dog, Anya, and she is absolutely got this teaching down. Like she knows exactly what it is time for. She knows when it's time to rest. She knows when it's time to play. She knows when it's time to tear up some important thing that I've left <laughs> lying around because that's what she's in the mood for. And, um, you know, she just flows with that. And it's really helpful for me if I'm struggling to, to feel into what it is time for if, or if I can't actually respond to it in that moment. I can look at her and see her embodying that perfectly and um, how that helps me to do it as well. So, um, yeah, I guess I just wanted to share that story because I found that really helpful and the teaching of doing what it is time for when it is possible to do that. Namo Medipu.
We dedicate the merits of this incense offering to all Buddhas and Bodhisattvas throughout space and time. May it be as fragrant as Earth herself, reflecting our careful efforts, our wholehearted awareness, and the fruit of understanding slowly ripening. May we and all beings be companions of Buddhas and Bodhisattvas. May we awaken from forgetfulness and realize our true home. We bow to our seats and tidy our seats. And say the closing verse, which is on our pages. It begins with the text. Blessed by our Amitabha's light, may we care for all living things and the hope we are. Now, when we do.